We're back at it again. You can see the title. Big fight coming up this Saturday between Juan Francisco Estrada and Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez this Saturday night in the desert in Arizona. But before I get into it, like the video, subscribe for your boy, click the notification bell. You know the rest. We ain't going to talk about all that. Let's just get right into what we came here for. And we're talking about two legends in the making, uh, one definite first battle hall of famer in chocolatito these two guys these they've already had two wars and now they're having a third one for all the marbles the rubber match and we, let's look into this fight man because the more and more i see of estrada and his resume the more and more impressed i get with this guy chocolatito we know who he is at one time back in 16 17 maybe 18 he was pound for pound king so, you know, I mean, he, he's already been established. But this guy, Estrada, man, he put in work, man. So let's look at both guys. Look, look at the, the background here. So they fought one time way, way back. Let's go back in time. Back in time. Back in time to 2012. When they first faced off at Light Flyweight. And that's at 108 pounds. And I didn't see that fight. But from the highlights I could see, I think that Estrada had issues. Not only with a very, very sharp fighter in Chocolatito. But a guy who is naturally smaller. And I think Estrada had issues making that weight. And he mentioned that in one of the 24-7s or whatever lead-ups to the fight they had. I think he had problems making that weight. He couldn't hurt Chocolatito. And Chocolatito was a natural at that weight. And he was able to, to win a very, really good fight against Estrada. It was very action-packed. But Chocolatito was the clear winner in that fight. Then you fast forward. Fast forward to 2021. Now, this is after Chocolatito has jumped up multiple weight classes to super flyweight. <clears throat> and they met a second time. And this time, it was a controversial decision in which Estrada was able to win by split decision. The first judge had it 115 to 113 for Chocolatito. Second judge, who needs his eyes and his head examined, had it judged 117 to 111 for Estrada. And then the third judge had it 115 to 113 for Estrada. Now, just looking at the, the highlights and the replay of the fight, I thought that Chocolatito won it by one, at, at least one round, if not two rounds. It should have been 115 to 113 for Chocolatito, or maybe more deservingly so, 116 to 112 for Chocolatito. So, he, he lost the WBA belt in that fight to uh, Estrada, and then Estrada kept his WBC and ring super flyweight titles. So Estrada, in that unification bout, took, walked away with three belts. And then he, he's kind of been, you know, he only had one fight since, and now he's back fighting Chocolatito. But you look at, let's look, let's look at each person's resume here, all right? You look at Juan uh, Francisco Estrada, really long resume here, man. You're talking about a guy who's 46 fights, 43 wins, three losses, 28 of those 43 wins by way of knockout. And let's look at some of the names on here. And some of them are very, very impressive. So he had the loss to Chocolatito at 108. Had a bunch of fights in between there from 2013 all the way up to 2017. And in that year, he beat Carlos Quadras at super flyweight. That's a very, very good win because Quadras had just finished giving uh, Gonzalez a very tough fight the year before. I know he lost his belt to Chocolatito, but he gave him a very tough fight. Very fast fighter, good power, and he came in and won a unanimous decision against Quadras. Next fight, he loses against Mung Visai, a guy who beat Chocolatito twice, knocking out Chocolatito in their second match. So he lost to Mung Visai by majority decision. Very good fight with Mung Visai. Had two more fights and then came back the next year and beat Mung Visai. Took that WBC and ring super flyweight title. And then two fights later, came back and had a very, very good fight against Carlos Quadras again, and it stopped him in the 11th round. I mean, you tell me this man ain't putting in work, you, you gotta be bumped, all right? And then he came back and had the, uni, um, the controversial decision against Chocolatito the very next fight, all right? He lost the fight, in my opinion, don't get me wrong, but he fought very, very well, though. He put in work, all right? So win, lose, or draw, this guy comes out to fight, and he puts it on the line every time, and you can never say this man ain't always show up. Even when he lose, it's because you came out and you just outboxed, you outfought him. Not because he, he don't he don't rarely if ever get dumped on. I'll put it like that. Against the best of the best. So that's what Estrada's about, man. He's really, really good. And then we look at Chocolatito, the man, the myth, the legend. 
uh, three division um, champion. He, he was trying to go in the same footsteps as his, his idol, uh, Alexis Agulo. And so he, he was a uh, champion at minimum weight. Then he went up to light flyweight, ran through that division. He was knocking people out left and right. And then he went up, and then at light flyweight, he, he also beat Estrada in that first fight, like I told you, all right? Then he went up to flyweight after like five or six more fights. And then he won the WBC and ring flyweight titles from Akira Yagashi. And then he had a uh, defense against Rocky Fuentes. And then he went on to defend that belt three more times. And then he moved up another weight division to try to match Arguello. And his first fight, his first fight at, at Super Flyweight, 115 pounds, fights not a, not a tomato can, not a trash can from down the street. He fights Carlos Quadras, who was the WBC champion. And mean, boys mean, right? And I remember being out in Chicago, out, out in Shy City, Shy Rack, whatever you want to call it. I'm sitting up there. At a very very uh, nice hotel. I forgot the name of it. It was it was awesome. And, and you know, it's not the Hilton or nothing like that, but it, it it was definitely nice. So I'm sitting there on Saturday night. You know, my my girls, you know, taking a nap or whatever. And I'm like, whatever. I'm not missing this fight. So I'm looking at the Quadras and Chocolatito fight, and I was doing a little little research on Quadras. And the more and more I researched him on him, I was just like, yo, Chocolatito, that dude. But Quadras gonna be a problem. And boy, was he a problem. He couldn't outbox Chocolatito, but the strength, the power, he was the bigger man and he used it that night. He just didn't have the boxing skills to beat Chocolatito because he was just getting tuned up. But he gave it back to Chocolatito just from the sheer size and weight of his punches. So, hey, that was a great win for Chocolatito going up in his first fight and then beating a monster like Quadras. And then he had to defend that title against Sora Rungasai in Madison Square Garden, one year, eh, six months later in March of 2017, he lost by uh, majority decision to Rungasai. He, he clearly lost because Rungasai was was too big, just like Quadras was. And then in their next fight in the rematch in September later that year, he got knocked out in the fourth round. It was a brutal knockout. I actually remember that. It was, it was really bad. People thought his career was over. I thought his career might be over because those are the type of knockouts that take years off your career and possibly years off your life. Similar to the Pacquiao knockout against Marquez in their fourth fight. And I remember even after seeing the first fight against Quadras, I thought, wow, he won a, a title in uh, in another weight class. And I'm looking at the fight. I'm like, these guys are too big for him, man. Like he's not... He won, but I'm like, I don't know how long you can keep this up. And then he ran it to Rung Vasai, and he, he lost by majority decision. I was like, yeah, it's, it's probably a weight class too far. And then he had the de devastating knockout after that. But then he took a year off, came back, had a uh, comeback fight against Moises Fuentes, knocked him out in the fifth round. Okay. Then he has another fight in December of the following year, another year off, TKO stoppage in the second round of eight. Then he comes back in... Uh, February of 2020 after that warm-up fight with uh, Diokos and beats Kaya Fai for the WBA Super Flyweight title. So not only did he win the WBC's title uh, four years prior, but then he came back after a brutal loss and then came back and won the WBA title at the same weight class. And then he retained that title in the defense in October of that year against Israel Gonzalez. And then he fought Juan Francisco Estrada for a second time and lost a controversial decision to lose his WBA title in that unification match. Then he comes back uh, after that fight a year layoff and beats Julio Cesar Martinez, who was the WBC uh, champion at the time. At this for uh, and, and and he look he's a young fighter, green, but. He's the type of guy that marches forward and just beats you down. And Chocolatito came out. Not only did he was he ready for whatever Martinez had, he eventually wore him down. And I, okay, he won by unanimous decision. But there were points in that fight where Martinez's corner could have and probably should have stopped the fight. Like he obviously wasn't going to win. He was taking a lot of punishment too, a lot of punishment. So that was extremely impressive for him to come back at this weight class and win the title 
win another bout which she should have got awarded against Estrada and then beat down a young hungry fighter who is clearly the bigger guy at super flyweight again so now we come to the point where it is December 3rd 2022 and these guys are going to match up for the third time all right so now that I gave you guys that long backstory let's go ahead and get into the tale of the tape and we look at Juan Francisco uh, Estrada 32 years old, standing at 5'4", 66 inch reach. And then we have Chacotito Gonzalez, excuse me, Estrada out of Mexico. And then we have Chacotito Gonzalez from Nicaragua, uh, 51 and 3, 38, 35 years old. They both fight orthodox. Chacotito is 5'3", with a 64 inch reach. So, you know, measurables are pretty similar. And I think at this point, um, Chacotito's grown into the weight class more than he had a couple years prior so. Hey, man, that's the tale of the tape right there. And let's go right into the the particulars of why I think each person is, why who I think is going to win and why. So let's go ahead and look at first speed. All right. You have Estrada. He's, he reminds me of Juan Manuel Marquez. Not like, he doesn't fight exactly like him, but like their build is somewhat similar and the way they throw punches is somewhat similar. The only difference is that Estrada is, much he, he can counter punch but that's not his bread and butter he can but he doesn't live and die off of it he will come forward and throw punches in bunches and yeah it's pretty pretty solid speed chocolatito very fast too dude i think that he has a similar level of speed as estrada i think it's a push in terms of speed honestly i think that chocolatito his speed comes from the fact that he throws punches in bunches but he has like a very funky rhythm about him. Like when he gets into a rhythm, it's really, really hard to get him up out of that. It's similar to B-Ball. Like once they get rolling, like good luck, bro. So that's a push. That's a tie there for me. Moving forward to power. I think this clearly goes to Estrada. I think that Estrada, he's the bigger guy, naturally. Yeah, Gonzalez has acclimated to the weight more so than in the past. But I think Estrada is clearly the bigger, sturdier guy at 115. And I think that he's going to be able to take the shots. I mean, his, his previous fight, the last fight he had against Argy Cortez, Cortez has no power. And he was landing some clean flush shots on, on Estrada. And even though he has no power, those type of shots should rock you. But he was eating them and walking forward the entire night. And even though Cortez finished the fight, I mean, he threw everything but the kitchen sink at Estrada and he, he, he couldn't move him. So, and... And there were times where Cortez looked like he got hurt and somehow he stood up, but he got hurt multiple times. So Estrada can crack. Uh, Gonzalez, he, he he got solid power, but he had he had better power at 105 and, and 108. At 112, 115, like he don't have the same type of power. He, he he got solid power, but but not like Estrada. So clearly to Estrada for the power. Now looking on the footwork, I think that this is where Chocolatito has the clear advantage because this man he the way he's able to set up his punches cut off the ring walk you down create angles even though he's not like jumping side to side he creates angles and just he can get you where he wants you Estrada he, he he'll move around like he, he got nice feet but like Gonzalez, very calculated, can cut the ring off on you and walk you down, throw punches and bunches, and, and try to break your will. His footwork is very, very good. So, point to Chocolatito here. Next one, Ring IQ. This one, both very, very smart fighters, high level fighters. You look at Estrada's last six fights. A guy like Argy Cortez, very young, very green. You saw a clear difference in the experience where Cortez was throwing shots, but like there was points where when it called for, he would he would throw a punch, didn't know what was coming back, and then just like clockwork, Estrada just had he threw the right combination back more often than not to just make him pay for missing the punch. Like very very calculated. We saw a similar thing against Quadras. Not only did he outbox Quadras, he outpowered him too. But Chocolatito, each time he's fought in Estrada, I thought that he's gotten the better of Estrada in terms of winning the chess match i think that the fights were more competitive because estrada was the bigger guy but when they were the same if, if this fight was at 112 or 108 i would say advantage clearly to chocolatito gonzalez but in terms of ring iq 
Um, and, and that's because of Ring IQ. Because I think Chocolatito, with that high guard, there are a few guys I've seen walk forward. Not just walk forward, but lean forward. Almost like leaning forward over head, head past his knees almost. Both hands up in the high guard, glued to his, his head. And he's able to pick off shots. You'll get some in, but like to be able to pick off shots and be able to have a great defense that way when you've got the blinders on to a certain extent, it's, it's very few guys that can do that and have the longevity he's had, man. 35, 50, 35 years old, 51 to 3, and still fighting at a high level with that style, that's not by happenstance, man. Very, 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 very calculated fighter. And he can move his head into certain spots off angle, you know what I mean, moving move to the right, and then he'll throw, uh, you know, throw a left, and then he dip his head to the left, and then he hit you with that straight right. Like, you you never know what he going to throw. Then he go to the body, bang, bang, then come back up with the uppercut. Like, you never know what this man going to throw. And then he'll throw that patented 45-degree uppercut, boom, and just catch people. They just don't see it coming. So, ring IQ, I got to go with my man Chocolatito. Experience. I think this is a wash, not just because they both have great resumes, but because this is their third time fighting. Not only do have they fought great fighters in multiple weight classes, but they've had epic battles against each other, very competitive battles. So it's a toss up, similar to, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just a toss up, bro. There's nothing else to be said about that. That's a push. And X Factor, I'm going to have to give the X Factor to Chocolatito because the st oh I didn't get into stamina let's let's talk about stamina stamina um I'm going to give that to Estrada because I think that as the bigger guy and we saw it in both fights around around six seven you start to see Estrada come on a little bit more and Chocolatito kind of cruise you know what I mean because I think as a smaller guy he was trying to conserve energy for the later rounds whereas Estrada like he wasn't the energy output wasn't as high because, like, he's not really... He's carrying the weight better. He's not worried about the conditioning factor. So, stamina, I'm going to give a slight edge to Estrada. And then, lastly, the X factor, I give that to Chocolatito because I think the the unique style, okay? Estrada, very, very, very great fighter. But he has a style... The best way I can think of it is of the Nacho Berestein camp. All right, like he's typical Mexican fighter, the, the style they use, but he is extremely, extremely good at what he does. You look at Estrada, look at Canelo, you look at, um, I mean, I, I can't think of, you, you, you think of like the great Mexican fighters, um, I'm like horrible with Mexican fighters, but those are the two I can think of off my head. High level, high skill guys. All right. Um, even Triple G. All right. Triple G, when he was with Abel Sanchez, he had that Mexican style. He fought like there's a, a dude from an Eastern Bloc fighter that was fighting like a Mexican fighter. A very distinct fighting style. That the guys that are great at it, they are really great at it. All right. Now, I mean, um, Julio Cesar Chavez, right? I mean, you, you talk about the, the great Mexican uh, fighters and they have a distinct style in the way they fight. But then you look at Chocolatito, Nicaraguan fighter, you don't see guys like that, man. You, you just don't. I mean, I, you see Cuban fighters, okay? They have a certain style of fighting, all right? But a Nicaraguan fighter, I, I, I've never quite seen Chocolatito's style. And that's something that makes him unique. And it's something that it's hard to have answers for. I think that's why he's been so successful, you know, to the point where he was the top pound for pound guy. For a guy to be at un under 110 pounds and be a top pound for pound fighter, for them to give you that much admiration and venerate you in that way, that speaks to your skill. So X Factor and, and the fact that you're at this age, after the wars you've been in and moving up in weight and you came back and said nah this weight ain't too big for me i'm gonna come back and after a knockout and boom i'm making noise again that's that's the type of guy that he built different man so x factor to chocolatito so overall i'm picking chocolatito gonzalez to win this fight by the majority decision 
Um, could be split decision. Who knows? But I'm, I'm pick. I'll, I'll pick him by decision. That's that's my prediction. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you agree with me? Do you not agree with me? Do you think this is going to be the best out of the three fights? You think this will be the best fight in the trilogy? Do you think that we have yet to see the best of these two guys? I think that this is going to be possibly fight of the year. The way it's setting up. I don't, I, you know what I mean? I don't want to speak too soon, but I think we're in for something special. Let me know what you guys, uh, know what you guys think below and we're going to talk about it after the fight and get into it. All right. I hope you guys enjoy your weekend. Be safe and enjoy the fights. Catch you on the next one. Peace.